So we're going to talk a little bit about the distance education program established at Hunter School um, that started this year. Um, we're going to talk about the structure of the program, um, a brief overview of the research findings so far and our early feedback, and then we're lucky enough to be joined by one of the parents of the uh, of a student in the program, Lisa, who will um, share some insights into her experience as a family member on the program. So the rationale for the program, Aspect had conducted a research project in 2017 and 18 um, around educating students um, on the autism spectrum at home, um, and the need for autism specific support was really clear. Um, we had projected that the, the major interest would be from homeschooling parents wanting more structure and support or parents who were dissatisfied with their local schooling options. Um, but when we engaged with um, the, the promotion of the program, we're actually really surprised at the, the mixed profile we, we had emerge. So it was, was a lot of rural families. It was students who were on the wait list for special placements, special school placements. It was quite complex families who for a variety of family contextual reasons weren't able to access their uh, local setting. Um, it was for students with really spiky profiles, which is a bit of a, a layman's educator's way of describing um, really niche skills. So potentially students who were quite bored with the academic requirements in a mainstream school, but had other challenges, perhaps with regulation or socially that meant they, they weren't really able to access that environment successfully. And then we did have a bit of an uptake in um, interest in the program when the coronavirus really hit and lots of families were educating at home. So in 2019, we consulted with Nessa about the program, um, had a lot of really supportive collaboration from them and, and an inspection and were approved to deliver years three to six. And then this year we had another inspection and approval for years seven and eight for 2021. So the key areas Nessa identified that we needed to focus on for compliance were, as well as all of our usual Nessa compliance considerations, they really wanted to know how we were delivering the curriculum in an active, dynamic and practical way. So we needed to show a lot of evidence for that, including how we were going to monitor engagement of students. And that was particularly important uh, for year seven and eight um, students because the assessment requirements are so much higher than earlier years. Uh, Nessa wanted to know all about our online versus offline time and how we would make sure students were getting the right number of hours of the curriculum. Um, they were very um, uh, asked us to consider really carefully how we develop social and emotional values and learning options for students through the program. Um, and they wanted a lot of, they had a lot of scrutiny on our on-site supervisor guidelines, which I'll talk about further in just a moment. So our program commenced in January 2020, um, sorry Vicky, thanks, with six students. Uh, we're at 14 students now. We had an unexpected um, rise because um, lots of families were suddenly at home and the interest kind of spiked. Um, and we're starting next year with 18 students. Um, as I said, next year we'll go to year seven and eight and it's available to all students in New South Wales in that age range. Uh, Google Classroom is our primary um, way of interacting with students. We use the stream, we use Hangouts, which is the, the Google version of Zoom meetings, I guess. Um, we use a Google, Zoom, <laughs> Google Calendar to help students organise their day um, and lots of supplementary educational apps that work really nicely with Google Classroom. But I just wanted to talk briefly before I hand over to Vicky about the different um, modes of learning through that platform. And this is something that's really shaped up over the year. So students do have uh, rostered time to be offline and working on independent tasks. We come together as a whole class. Um, we haven't managed to get all 14 yet because of the different profiles, but we're close to having all 14 students together at different points to just introduce new concepts, do large group activities like our daily meditation or our daily yoga. Um, uh, and then we break into smaller groups in a, in a loosely ability based exploration of key concepts. Every student has at least one one-to-one one -one session with a teacher or a teacher aide every week. Um, and there are extension opportunities, just like you would in a classroom, differentiation and extension opportunities. Our residential program uh, takes, well, in a non-coronavirus year, takes place 15 days a year. We unfortunately had to go to a different model this year for three of our residentials. Um, but that's really where we incorporate all of our practical learning opportunities and a real focus on those social and emotional opportunities. I did just want to say before I hand over to Vicky, the social and emotional learning opportunities, um, Nessa were very adamant that that had to be a, a huge part of our uh, residential program, and it certainly is. But we've been amazed at the social and emotional connection these students have with each other and our staff through the distance education platforms week to week. We really hadn't expected that. We thought rapport building would be trickier. We thought social connection would be trickier, but perhaps it's because we've got an amazing group of students. But We've seen massive social and emotional development for all of them. Uh, 
the on-site supervisor role changes a little bit depending on the mode of learning um, and it is really personalized for student to student. We have um, a fair range of students that Vicky will talk about in a moment, but um, typically the, the support is um, so strong and the, and the class team know the students so well that we're able to fade back that on-site supervisor role as much as possible. Um, we've had parents attend the residentials and really engaged in um, parent workshops and coffee mornings and individual planning meetings and behaviour support meetings. So that's a real opportunity to connect this whole community together at our residential settings. So ASPECT is collaborating with Macquarie University to evaluate this first year of the distance education program. Um, the study is going to gather information from parents, teachers and students through two semi-structured interviews. The first interview uh, we asked about prior school experiences, motivations for joining and any expectations or concerns for the program. And then the final interview in November we'll be asking participants to reflect on the school year to describe what has worked well and whether there's been any particular challenges. Today I'm going to present findings from the first set of parent interviews conducted in April. Okay, so this table provides um, some background about the students whose parents participated in the interviews. Students are aged between 9 and 13, all except one are males. One of the students has an intellectual disability. Five of the seven have fluent speech. Um, so you can see they're quite a diverse range there, as Megan mentioned. And five of the seven were homeschooled in the year prior to joining the program. The remaining two students were in regular classrooms. In terms of prior schooling experiences, parents mostly talked about how negative school experiences had triggered that decision to look for alternatives. They described a lack of autism knowledge amongst school staff, especially around necessary accommodations for their child and how this had led to behavioural problems and stress. They also uh, talked about a number of sensory triggers in the schooling environment and how this could result in meltdowns and again, stress for their child. Um, parents talked about traumatic experiences at school, including frequent bullying and the effect that this had had on their child's self-esteem. And finally, those parents who had previously homeschooled described wanting more routine and structure in their child's day and how that had directly led to their decision to join the distance education program. We asked parents to think about what their expectations for distance education were at the time of enrolment and what they'd hoped to gain from the program. One of the main motivations related to having access to teachers with specialised training in autism. Parents also felt that their child would benefit from a small class and particularly lessons that could be individualised to their child's ability and learning needs. Parents were also hopeful that distance education would allow them to be more involved in their child's learning and be able to manage the learning environment in the home to be optimal for their child. For parents who had previously homeschooled, the school-like environment the opportunities for socialisation and the support for uh, parents were all described as strong motivators. In terms of considerations, parents were concerned about the time and commitment that will be required from them. They also expressed some worries about their child's ability to engage in an online environment. You know, would they be able to maintain attention and have the skills necessary to use the technology? Parents also talked about their child not having the same opportunities for socialisation. As the initial interviews were conducted in April, it gave us an opportunity to check in with parents and get some early feedback about what their experiences had been like in those first months. And a number of benefits and challenges had emerged. The most common benefit referred to by parents was that of flexibility in terms of when, where and how their child engaged in their schoolwork. Interestingly, all of the parents talked about friendships that their child had made. Uh, they gave examples of children staying on after class or even jumping onto the system on weekends to engage with um, their peers from the class. In general, the children were described as happier, less stressed and exhibiting less behavioural problems. The challenges that were described included what parents were often referring to as teething problems and that largely centred on uh, technical difficulties, um, the communication back and forth in the first few weeks of the program as well. Parents um, also talked about um, the time commitment that was required from them. 
Finally, parents describe some difficulties supporting their children with the hands-on skill, skill development areas. Um, examples were handwriting and art in particular. Next steps from here with the research, we'll conduct the final interviews in November. And from that, we hope to develop some recommendations based on these early experiences and then implement any changes, adaptations for the program from 2021 going forward. And I'm gonna hand back to Megan now, who's gonna to talk to one of the parents from um, the distance education classroom. Thanks, Vicky. Um, and we are lucky enough to have Lisa Flood presenting with us today. Um, Lisa, I'll hand over to you, but how do you, how do you feel the program's going for your beautiful son and how are you finding the on-site supervisor role? Um, good, yeah. I can't say enough about um, the program. It's, I remember asking Mason at the end of last year, you know, if school isn't working for you, what do you think about trying something different? Because he obviously needs to be involved in any decisions that... Uh, he needs to make and I remember him saying I have no idea mum I'm, I don't know I haven't done it before so um, yeah it's it's working really well for him I, I, it's evolved as the years um, gone on it's certainly changed very much from the way it started to now um, but it just keeps getting better and better so yeah it's nice to have um, input into um, the program and then uh, teachers listening and learning from that. Um, I think it's been a big learning journey for everybody um, throughout the year, yeah. Great. And you've noticed changes in um, Mason's academic engagement or? Oh, no question. I mean, last year I sat, uh, Mason wouldn't attend school um, without me being there. Um, the school said there was no support for him um, at the Catholic school. So I ended up sitting outside his classroom um, for 12 months. And during that 12 months, um, he would sleep on a beanbag outside the classroom. Um, he really didn't participate. He didn't really learn anything in the 12 months that we were at school. Um, I would have quite happily sat there to year six if I felt that um, it was going to benefit Mason. But that was the thing at the end of the year, we realised that academically, um, even though he was band six for... Um, no, no, please. Um, even though he was band six um, for all his subjects, last year it started to decline and we really noticed a lot of, you know, he couldn't hear. Um, no, take the phone, please. Close the door. Um, he couldn't hear the teacher. He, um, he just wasn't paying attention at all. And, and really, to be honest, the whole year had, it, had really amounted to nothing in his development. Um, this year, he is absolutely thriving in every aspect. Um, academically, he's, he's just doing all his work that he's required. Um, socially, he's got, you know, he's, he's developed relationships with the other kids on the, you know, through the computer, but also if he has play dates with his friends from his previous school, he manages those play dates really well um, as well. And emotionally, he's gone from a child who, who didn't sleep, who didn't eat, who constantly had um, meltdowns, would trash the house, um, you know, didn't want to be here anymore. So, you know, major mental health issues to a child that is just happy, he's, he's content, uh, he's confident in himself. Um, he's just a different kid. I, I couldn't, I can't say enough about how, as a family, our whole life has changed so much because of the program. Yeah. Well, we're so proud of him. He should be so proud of himself. He's done fan, a fantastic job. 